All right, guys. So what is going on? Charlie Entertaining here, and welcome to. I guess it's a reaction video, but I'm really just gonna call it like a vlog because I'm just I'm not gonna be watching most much of it, and I'm gonna be uploading it soon. I thought before I decided to make this Minecraft video that I would uh, record myself watching the Senate to vote on a two trillion coronavirus stimulus bill relief package which is supposed to send checks to Americans and shit like that. They voted on it yesterday and I'm pretty sure it was only I'm pretty sure it was only one trillion dollars um yesterday and now they bumped it up to two trillion and they've been debating and shit like that. I saw it yesterday. They all said their parts and shit like that and listen I am tired. Listen I'm independent I don't say I'm a Republican, I don't say I'm a Democrat, but I watched both sides. I watched the live debate yesterday, and I watched both sides, and let me tell you something. When I saw all the Republicans give their word, and then all the Democrats give their word, and then I saw Nancy Pelosi, after the debate, jump up on that fucking news channel and say that, sadly, the Republicans want loans for big businesses and shit, I was like, oh my fucking god. I watched the whole thing. She lied straight through her fucking teeth. Straight through her teeth. Every Republican said that the Democrats wanted loans for big businesses, corporates, and shit like that. And all the Republicans were talking about the families. All the Republicans were talking about the families, how we need to get this shit done. Nancy Pelosi is a cunt. I hope this virus gets fucking, I mean, this bill gets passed. States. The heart of the package we're passing today is almost identical to what we brought actually Sunday night. It was a bipartisan proposal, which ranking members and chairman of all the major committees had worked together to be able to get this done. The key elements of it are still there. It's unemployment insurance for Americans, including a $600 plus up to be able to go through the process. There is uh, support for small businesses that will actually pay the payroll. We don't want individuals to end up on unemployment insurance. It's better if they stay connected to their same company. So it has a unique new proposal that's built in to be able to say a small business can go to any bank rapidly to be able to get a loan there, which will convert into a grant if they maintain their current employee number. Fucking dick. keeps people connected to their business and keeps people assured of a job at the end of all this when it all finishes out. Man. It's a grant program for larger businesses. That's designed to say if you're a very large company, you're not going to get a you're not going to get a grant. You're going to get a loan at this process. And at that moment, you get a loan when you don't have capital, you don't have access to it right now because of all that's going on. You could get that. This is also has a feature built in where individuals. I'm going to eat this check. fucking grilled cheese. This side looks nice. That is built in to be able to get immediate economic. But this side don't. Sunday night. Now there have been some tweaks some folks have brought up that some of our Democratic colleagues really wanted to be able to engage in and many of those changes have been heard and been added and some we have said absolutely not, it's not connected to COVID-19 at all. But there are some things that some of our Democratic colleagues have wanted to make sure they got in and through all the negotiations some of these things were changed. For instance, they really wanted to make sure that energy companies couldn't get any support. So they fought hard to be able to make sure there is no additional money for President buying additional oil to put in the Strategic Petroleum Reserve at its lowest price now, so it will actually cost us more money in the future. But it was their intention to say we don't want oil companies to get any kind of support in this downturn. They also wanted to make sure that there was great transparency because they didn't trust the Trump administration, so they built in an inspector general and a whole bunch of additional people to be able to watch the Treasury through the process. And they put in a neat little feature that they demanded, and that was that no son or daughter or family member or any individual that works with the presidency, vice presidency or the congress could get any of, not the grant programs, the loan programs. In fact, it was interesting the language they demanded. No son-in-law could get that. I wonder who that could be targeted towards. A particular son-in-law that might be there. Literally, a lot of this fight that we've had over the last three days is because they were demanding that there was no way that the president or any of his family could get any kind of loan or benefit from this program at all. 
So we spent three days, three days of delay, because they had some additional demands for some things they want to do, and significantly targeted a lot of the president and his family. I understand they don't like the president. I get that. We want to do everything we can to be able to protect the workers. That's why we had all these programs in place already, and why we've done a lot of bipartisan work to be able to get it done. It's done now. Let's get it going. And our encouragement is to be able to have the House be able to finish this up as quickly as possible, and to be able to get the support to the American people. What has been interesting, though, is in the, the speeches that I've heard on the floor today from my colleagues, and from many individuals in releases that I've seen, these folks have mentioned their prayer. They've mentioned with God's help we're going to get through this. They've mentioned the struggle that we're going through as a nation and how we're praying for each other. And it keeps reminding me of something. It's a very old psalm of ascent. Psalm 121. The Jews would come into Jerusalem with a different feast. They would sing these psalms of ascent as they came off the eastern hills and would start rising up towards Jerusalem. And the psalm they would sing, I think, is pertinent for our time right now. Psalm 121 reads, I lift up my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? Now remember the mountains here is the capital city, Jerusalem. It's the seat of government for them and the center of worship. It's the seat of government for them. And they would sing, I lift up my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord the maker of heaven and earth. You will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from harm. He will watch over you. The Lord will watch over your coming and going both now and forevermore. It's interesting to me that the people would come in marching into Jerusalem, the seat of government, singing the song, I lift up my eyes to the mountain, but where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord. And all the things that are going on in Washington, D.C. right now, you'll hear people here repeating over and over again, our hope is not in government. Our hope is not in how much money we can spend. We understand full well. When we lift up our eyes to the mountain, to this hill, we understand full well where our help comes from. It's not from all the folks in this room. Our help comes from the Lord. And we're grateful that he neither slumbers nor sleeps. With that, I yield the floor. Okay. So that's something they do. Let me let me talk about that now. Yesterday, uh, I don't know if he's a Republican or a Democrat. I think they had uh, different ties on to... Uh, uh, distinguish which ones they were, but he said, I yield the floor, which you're supposed to do that if you're in the, uh, I'm guessing this is the Senate House, this is definitely the Senate House, if you're in the Senate House, you're supposed to say, I yield the floor after you're done talking, because once somebody calls your name, that means you have, you have the floor, you have the entire room, nobody else can speak except for you, so you say, I yield the floor, and they were all saying that, uh, you know, at the end, they were saying, and with that, I yield the floor. It's crazy. Who are they going to let speak? I like that guy. He was talking about, like, uh... He was talking about an army soldier, and he was talking about a hashtag that I forgot, and I wish I remembered, because I would have probably went to go hashtag it, but... It was a story about a soldier who uh, had a wife, he was talking to, he was telling a story about how they met, and shit like that, and uh, one day, while he was in Iraq, uh, oh, who is it? Oh, Republican. I think. Chinese Communist Party has saved the world from even their own people and at least the worst pandemic in a century of us all. Now it calls to us to defeat it. Near how a strange and unsettling hush has fallen over much of the country as businesses close and millions of Americans embrace what's to come. In New York, Seattle, Elsewhere, 
urgent matter to suppress activity as a gun. In emergency rooms and ICUs, courageous doctors and nurses were already locked in a battle to save the lives of their patients. Protective gear is a hard supply, but their regard for safety and even the family comes second to their duty. Days ahead will be a close run thing in those cities as they struggle to keep their hospitals open and functioning. But make no mistake. You know, I am, I am 100% glad they are saying the China virus, 100%. I am so fucking upset at the Prime Minister of China, I am so fucking upset at everybody at fucking China, because... <coughs> Are you guys really that fucking stupid? Are you guys really that fucking retarded to really believe that... <sighs> China's saying, after admitting to us that the disease first emerged in China, in Wuhan, after the disease first emerged, China is saying that the coronavirus is man-made that it was made in the United States and released in China. I am so fucking upset about it. And the, the sad, the sad thing is, is that I don't even, I don't even want a lot of people to think that the virus was made in China. I don't believe the virus was made in China. I do believe that the virus was discovered in China, but the fucked up thing is, <coughs> Is that nobody fucking said anything to nobody. And the one person who tried to do something got fucking imprisoned, imprisoned, or disappeared, or whatever the fuck. And then he later died from that disease. You give no fucks about your own fucking people. And then you blame it on other fucking countries. You make everything in the fucking world. You make all the fucking money. And then you blame us for the shit you fucking do. That's ridiculous. Dude, listen, I'm telling you, chloroquine, all right? Listen, I'm not a scientist. I'm not a medical expert. I'm not nothing. All I know is that a bunch of people are overdosing on this shit. Please do not self-medicate. All I know is that one man was cured of this coronavirus. A 53-year-old man was cured of this coronavirus with combination of that anti-malaria drug and chloroquine. Please let that be the cure. I am crossing my fingers and hoping and praying every second of every day that scientists find out that that is the way we beat this shit. I really am. We can't, as the saying 
knows that the cure be worse than the disease. The urgency to stay on economic collapse is, of course, understandable. It is tempting to think that we face a simple choice between shutting down to fight the virus and opening up to save the economy. The choice is not so simple. Some thoughtful observers note that the seasonal flu and automobile accidents kill more Americans annually than has this virus. That's true as far as it goes. We're just at the beginning of this pandemic. And I have to add the Javits Center in New York City has never been converted into a field hospital for the flu, car wrecks. Granting that, some say, perhaps we can reopen in a few days, since our elderly are most at risk from this virus. Quarantine them. Keep them safe. The argument goes, while the rest of us get back to work. But there are 72 million Americans over the age of 60 in this country. Many of them raise children, live alone, or work outside the home. They can't wall themselves off from the world. Or should we wall them in? Moreover, tens of millions of younger Americans have pre existing conditions that put them at elevated risk from this virus. That's another thing I'm saying, bro. Like, I've talked to Azim a couple of times after, you know, me and him had stopped being best friends just to tell him to be safe because I don't give a fuck who you are. I still want you to be safe. I told him to be safe. So, like, he has asthma, and that is a respiratory illness. And so if he caught COVID-19, that would put him... He's... 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 He's 17, I'm pretty sure. That would put him at commission for the entire sickness. He would... He, he would die. I, Azim would die. I, I'm I'm 100% confident that if Azim catches COVID-19, that he would die 100% because of how bad his asthma is. So it doesn't matter. Like, if you're young and you smoke, that's even a fucking risk right there because that means you have weaker lungs than somebody who is young and doesn't smoke. Speaking of fucking smoking, I have a Cheyenne over here. Everybody. Care is already being rationed, man, and it, it 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 hurts. It upsets me so fucking much, man. I there are there are doctors right now, probably in Italy as well, but there are doctors in Spain right now. I've seen videos of them crying, telling us stories about how they have to go. I right, listen. Okay, let's man, right, let's use this pillow. See this pillow? All right. Imagine having to do this, right? Old guy. Right here, I'm just like, yo, man, I'm sorry. Uh, there's a guy in the other room, and he, he's he's having a panic attack right now, an asthma attack right now. I have to take your respirator and put it on him to save his life. He'll probably live like five more years than you will. And uh, so, yeah, uh, you'll probably die after this. I'm sorry to have to do this, but I got to take your mat. I couldn't do it, man. I couldn't do it. I'd be so fucking upset, dude. I don't, I, I applaud, I, I praise, I fucking commend. I don't even know if I'm using that word right, but I fucking praise all of you nurses, all of you doctors who are taking care of patients during this pandemic, especially the ones in developing countries who have to kill old people just to save young people. It really, really 
really upsets me. I'm telling you, I'm with you. I feel the pain. I feel the hurt. It fucking sucks. I don't know why it did that. You say Chinese virus? Including folks in my home state of Texas. I think about how we came together in the wake of Hurricane Harvey. Ah. To lead search and rescue operations, clear debris, and rebuild communities and lives. We saw the strangers forming human chains to rescue a driver trapped in a car, restaurants offering free meals to first responders. And a Houston legend, known affectionately as Mattress Mac, opening his furniture stores for those in need of shelter. Wow. One volunteer said, I've met more of my neighbors in the last 24 hours than I have in the last 20 years. <laughs> well, these heartwarming stories of Texas lending a hand to one another are a source of comfort, even during the toughest times. Right now, when extending a physical hand is one of the worst things you can do because it violates social distancing rules, there's still plenty of neighbors. I've been seeing that too, man. I don't know what people don't understand. Like, you have to listen to these fucking warnings. I was outside yesterday walking around, and, like, social distancing is being practiced, especially in stores where it is enforced. But... Outside, people aren't taking these fucking warnings seriously, man. Like, at least in 7-Eleven as well. Like, in 7-Eleven, I... And in Dollar General. I was in Dollar General, and there was a lady with a mask on who looked sick as fuck and with gloves on, and nobody was social distancing. Everybody was right behind somebody. There was an old man right behind the lady with a mask on pushing his cart on her cart, and it was fucking ridiculous, man. Please, whenever I'm outside... Whenever I go towards somebody, I make sure to separate myself a little bit. I walk a couple steps, you know, to the side of them. Do that every fucking time you go outside. I do it with everybody. It doesn't matter. You got to do that. You really do. This is going to be part one. I'm going to end this, start uploading it, and then do a part two.